My name is Ricardo Fontes Carvalho. I come from Portugal. And we are here today to talk about uh, a new educational product of the EAC, which is the EAC webinars. We have here uh, with us today Professor Cem Lotan from Israel, who actually is the coordinator of the task force of the ESC, who is responsible for these ESC webinars. Welcome, Professor. Um, the first question uh, that I would like to, to ask you is uh, if you can briefly describe to us what is this new project of the ESC, of the, its educational department. Thank you very much, Ricardo. As you know, the internet has become a very powerful tool for education and actually DSC has started a program of e-learning. We realize that today, since it's a little bit expensive and difficult to travel, we can provide up-to-date information through webinar on the internet where you can get the latest material from key opinion leader and be even interactive with them. Excellent. Um, can you tell us what are the main goals, what are the main objectives of this program and who is the main target audience of this, uh, of this ESC webinars? Well, the main goal is to provide knowledge about the hottest topics that were discussed during the ESC. Take those topics and present them in a concise way and this can be targeted to all the cardiology community, some will be mainly to fellows, but mostly all those people that are interested in specialties in cardiology. Excellent. Um, I know that one of the main uh, preoccupations that you have is to assure the maximum interactivity in this kind of webinars. How do you pretend to, do, to assure this interactivity and what will be the format of these sessions of these webinars? You're quite right. In order for a webinar to be attractive, you have to be sure that people will continue with you all along the webinar. We are aiming to have the webinar between 45 and 60 minutes, not too long, but have them interactive. So we're going to have two or three people responsible. You will have the one that is going to be the lecturer, but there will be a moderator that will moderate the session together with the lecturer, but people will be able to log, ask questions, communicate, so it's going to be a very interesting interactive session. So I think it is important to, to, to stress that, that, that there are people are not only attending, the, uh, someone talking, but they actually can ask questions to the presenters. Definitely, definitely. We believe that if you're just listening, you're getting after a while tired and you just leave the computer. If you have the possibility to interact, to ask, to respond, it's going to be more interesting, more fun, and those sessions, webinars, are planned to be highly interactive. Excellent. Uh, I think I, I know that you have already um, started to develop the program of these webinars, and uh, the question that uh, I would like, like to ask you now is, which one will be the, which will be the first topic of the first webinar? When we till it will happen and what are the future topics that you pretend to to cover during uh, for this new initiative of the ESC? Actually we thought about 16 topics which we defined in the entire field of cardiology according to the core curriculum. Four of them will be devoted to the new guidelines that appeared but there won't be just repetition of the guideline there will be case studies, discussion, presentation of those things. The rest, as I mentioned, will be topics that will cover all the different areas, electrophysiology, echocardiography, imaging, all the other parts. In each part we're going to take the newest highlights and changes that occurred in the last year. We decided that we'll have one webinar per month, actually maybe two, and the first program, which will start in October, will be in this lipidemia and we're going to discuss the changing paradigm in the treatment of this lipidemia. What do we know? What's going to be the future? How is it going to be affected with the new studies that presented here? Etc. Etc. And again, it will be interactive where people can ask questions about the role of different drugs, interaction, combinations, etc. 
So it will be a major start with new guidelines of the dyslipidemias, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, and all these new guidelines that are appearing in this exactly. year's Congress. Exactly, but it won't be just reading the guidelines. Sure. It'll be discussing with case presentation, interactive input from the audience, from the moderator, and it will be directed to everyone that would like to learn the new developments in cardiology. Excellent. Uh, another important point for people attending this kind of webinars is the certification. Uh, if they can get any kind of certificate uh, after attending the, the webinars. De How do you plan to do, to do this? Definitely. We thought about it that those webinars should be approved by a scientific board committee and people should get credit, CME. We do know that it's starting to develop in some European countries, I think in the future, all countries will have to prove that people attended some continuous medical education and all those seminars will be in such a way that people at the end would be able to get credit for that. Excellent. Um, some people may already know some of the webinars, especially those who were developed by the European Association of Echocardiography and also from the Electrophysiology Association. Uh, of the ESC, which have been very successful. Uh, what, is, what are the main differences and uh, similarities to these webinars? Can you please comment? I think, Ricardo, that you're right, that actually they paved the way, and it took them some three years to develop the program and the way that they want to be, have them. I think that our webinars are going to be, in a way, similar, not concentrating not only on imaging and electrophysiology, but taking the same successful way of bringing information in other topics that are of interest. Pediatric cardiology, acute heart failure, etc., etc. Excellent. Uh, w one final question. Uh, actually, as you previous, previously said, uh, physicians are assisting to increasing difficulties to, to traveling and to getting some funding for, uh, for traveling. And actually in this area, a lot of, of things are changing. Uh, how do you think that it will be the future of continuous education in cardiology? I think the internet and the web opened a huge opportunity for us to continue our teaching through the web. And I think that this will grow and grow with coming years. It's not only because of the difficulties, but definitely traveling is difficult. But, you know, if I take my fellows, they have to stay and work at the hospital. So it's not only a matter of money, it's a matter of work. With the webinar, you're more flexible, it's cheap, you can do it in your own time, in the evening, and you can get just on your computer the best key opinion leader. You can develop then a questionnaire and answering system, and you can have the best education program at your fingertip without having to leave your uh, house. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Professor Lotan, for being with us today. Thank you very much, Ricardo, and we hope to see you in the first webinar with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It was quick. Without preparation. And without repetitions. And without repetitions.